Okay, today we're going to take a look at chapter 9, which is conjunctions. And we've already talked about conjunctions in the past, and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. And uh, then we were going to have compound sentences that sometimes are joined by uh, conjunctive adverbs and how to punctuate those, such as however, therefore, consequently. Uh, we're going to join unequal sentences, one that has a dependent clause and an independent clause, and when do you place a comma to offset a uh, dependent clause that begins with a subordinated conjunction, and what to do if the uh, dependent clause is at the end rather than the beginning. Uh, and the uh, subordinated conjunctions are uh, usually although, because, if, since, and when. How to punctuate introductory dependent, terminal dependent, parenthetical, essential, and non-essential clauses. And then how to deal with correlatives uh, with the words not only, but also, and, and, or, um, either, or, neither, and nor. Uh, and then sentence variety. So this is really a relatively short chapter. I think you'll enjoy this one, actually, because we've already discussed it. Let's start with a pretest. <coughs> me. Uh, number one, uh, download the Pandora app and install it. Okay, so we have two choices when we're looking at A and B, and it has to do with the comma. They place a comma right there, and does is it necessary? Um, this one begins with a verb, so it's imperative, um, or indicative rather. So you is the understood subject in each of these cases. And then download and install is a compound verb. You download the Pandora app and install it. Um, so in this particular case, it, since we don't have a subject, to go after the coordinating conjunction, we do not need a comma, so letter A is the correct response. Okay, number, and also there's a statement that if you have a compound sentence that has 13 or fewer words, then you don't um, use a comma to separate the coordinating chunk conjunction uh, that does separate the two independent clauses. Number two, Jacob Wink prefers to remain in Dallas, but Virginia Yan is considering the San Antonio area. We need a comma right there, because that comma is going to join two independent clauses. This is the first clause, and then this is the second clause. Oops, Virginia Yan's a subject, sorry. Uh, it's considering. So two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction requires a comma, therefore, we want to use letter B that complies with that. Number three, and God Singh attended the Phi Beta Lambda competition in Nashville and brought home several awards. Um, looks like letter A is going to be the correct uh, answer. Singh attended the Phi Beta Beta, Phi Beta Beta Phi Beta Lambda competition in Nashville and brought. So it has a compounded verb, attended and brought home several words. This and right here is not joining two independent clauses. Uh, it's just joining two compounded verbs. So no comments necessary there. And then number four, all employees must be able to communicate effectively, semicolon, therefore comma, we evaluate communication skills during uh, employment interviews. That's going to be correct. This conjunctive adverb, therefore, has a semicolon before it and a comma after it, and it joins two independent clauses. Employees uh, must be able, and after the conjunctive adverb is we evaluate subject and verb. So that is correct. A conjunctive adverb that joins two independent clauses has a semicolon before it and a comma after it. And then uh, number five, we'll go down to number five here in just a second.
performance reviews, therefore, will include discussion of employees' communication skills. Uh, the word therefore is just parenthetically inserted. It's not joining two independent clauses, uh, so it will not require a semicolon before it. So letter A is correct, not letter B, where they do have the semicolon. Uh, Whenever you have a parenthetical insertion that does not join two independent clauses, see reviews as your subject will include as your verb. So therefore, is not joining two independent clauses. So only use commas to offset uh, a parenthetical expression. Uh, number, so that, that letter A is your correct answer. Then number six, when you receive the quote, be sure to have our legal counsel review it. Uh, or omit the comma. You want to include it in there. You is the understood subject. Be sure is your verb. So here's your dependent clause right here that includes you receive. And this word right here is a subordinating conjunction because a noun and verb comes after it. That word when is a conditional word, so that's why it's called a subordinating conjunction. Uh, so always offset an introductory adverbial clause or a dependent clause with a comma, and then the independent clause will be the main sentence. Letter A is your correct answer on six. Seven, please let me know when you receive confirmation. Uh, you is the understood subject. Um, let is your verb. You let me know whenever, when you receive Confirmation. Well, this when you receive confirmation is a dependent clause as well, but it's terminal. It comes at the end, and if it doesn't interrupt the flow of the sentence, do not use a comma to offset it. So letter B is the correct response. Number eight, Sherilyn said that Travis Garcia, who works in our financial department, will be um, leaving next month. Okay, the words who... Uh, whose, whom, and which, and that. Uh, those are, are relative pronouns that sometimes can have uh, restrictive or non-restrictive clauses. The word that usually never has a comma to offset it. Usually never. Uh, but the word which generally does have a comma to offset it. But they're actually adjective describe. Uh, uh, clauses, they're, they're dependent clauses, and they may or may not have commas. So let's read this again. Sherilyn said, there's your subject and verb, and then that Travis Garcia, who works in our finance department, will be leaving next month. Well, this who clause right here, who works in our finance department, we have to decide, does it need or does it not need commas to offset it? Since we know who Travis Garcia is, then his descriptor is not necessary. So we could really just leave it out. Since we could really just leave it out, use commas to offset it. So I'm going to place a comma here, and I'm going to place a comma right there, as they did in the next sentence. Okay, right there. Sherilyn said that Travis Garcia, comma, who works in our finance department, comma, will be leaving leaving next month. So we have a dependent clause that's not required, not it's non-restrictive, so therefore it requires commas if it's really not required, indicating that it's kind of parenthetically inserted. Okay, then number nine, so letter B is the correct answer on that one, by the way. Then number nine, employees who work in our sales department are eligible for bonuses. So here's a who clause again, which describes the employees. Do we need or do we not need a comma to offset that clause? Employees who work in our sales department. I don't know which employee they're talking about. So that who clause is required. Which ones? The ones that work in our sales department. Since it's required for the meaning to be clear, I'm not going to include commas to offset this adjective clause, so letter A is correct. And then finally, is a correlative. We have not only and then but also. Okay, notice how not only goes together and then it says but it also. But also is a correlative, 
So that is not parallel, and we don't see letter B right here, but I'm guessing it says, but also it is cheaper than the others. So I'm guessing letter B is going to be your correct answer on number 10. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and take a look at those individually as we travel through the three levels in uh, chapter 9, conjunctions. Okay, first and foremost, coordinated conjunctions connect words, phrases, and clauses of equal grammatical value or rank. The most common coordinated conjunctions are and, but, or, nor, for, so, and yet. Or I guess the most common are and, but, or, nor. Uh, notice in these sentences that coordinating conjunctions join e grammatically equal elements. Important leadership traits include vision, comma, integrity, comma, and self-confidence. So we have three items in a series, and we use commas even before the last and. So they're equal rank, equal words. Strong leaders are able to motivate and to inspire. So the word and joins two infinitives together equally. You will find job listings on our website or on our Facebook page. So we have two prepositional phrases joined by the word or. No commas are used to offset whenever they're joined of equal rank. Gasoline prices are falling, but college tuition costs are rising. So we have prices are falling, and then we have a coordinating conjunction to uh, costs are rising. So the coordinating conjunction joins two independent clauses and must be offset with a comma. Okay, other uh, coordinating conjunctions. We already mentioned and, but, or, nor. And then there's for, so, and yet. Um, that she recommends, notice how she uses these particular words right here to join two independent clauses and a comma to offset them. But the word so is the one that uh, seems to be used very, seems to be used more informally. And instead of using the word so, she recommends that you change it to a conjunctive adverb and use therefore. Uh, the informal one right here is the position requires a writing test, comma, so you should brush up. That's how we would talk, basically. And that would be grammatically correct, but it's considered informal. She recommends using a conjunctive adverb to join two independent clauses with a semicolon before therefore and a comma after it. That's a recommendation. Um, other, you can also transition the word so instead of using it as a conjunction, uh, you can change the wording altogether. Here's one. Texting while driving can be dangerous, comma, so almost all states have made this practice illegal. Well, she changed it completely to a complex sentence by starting with a dependent clause because texting while driving can be dangerous, comma, Almost all states have made this practice illegal. So changing the wording instead of using so as a conjunction. Generally, therefore, or making it a complex sentence uh, by introducing a dependent clause with a comma, and then you can continue with the uh, independent clause. Um, the word so that is generally preferred. So if you have a situation and a result of that situation, Use the word so that and make it a dependent clause after the word so rather than as a con coordinating conjunction. Okay, the next page. <clears throat> has an example right here, analyze all your possible property risks, comma, and protect yourself with comprehensive homeowner's insurance. The young understood subject is you, and it has a compound verb. You analyze and protect. And so, and you protect, and it's more than 13 words. 
So that's why a comma is used to separate these two independent clauses. Now, right here, highlight this particular area. It's really important. If you have a compound sentence that's 13 or fewer words, then you can get rid of that comma. If it has 13 or fewer words, get rid of the comma that joins the two independent clauses. When relating to the word, the coordinated conjunction, and. So here's this one right here. Nicole posted a comment. That's an independent clause. And she waited for responses. One is not necessary because that's only nine words. So they omitted the uh, comma that joins those two independent clauses. Same thing for this next one. It has only 10 words. <clears throat> okay, do not use commas when coordinating conjunctions join compound verbs, objects, or phrases. You can place and track. So here's a compound verb right here, and the word and is not uh, adding the word you. In, uh, it's not being inferred right here. You can place and track your shipments with ease. So that's why a comma is not included in that particular location. They did the same thing with prepositional phrases on the next one. Uh, you, your our CEO said that employees should not have to choose between working overtime and spending time with families. The only time I would put another uh, a comma to separate this and is if we started off with another subject and verb and included it right there. Um, here we have two infinitives and a coordinating conjunction that joins them. These are compound. They go to bed. They're expected to attend and send their proxies. So no comma is used to offset um, that particular, uh, those two infinitive phrases. Now, conjunctive adverbs, we've used them before. They're also called transitional expressions. And... Uh, Oh, I probably should have used a better example here. Let me use the word however. When you have the how word however, use a semicolon before it and a comma after it only when a subject and verb precedes the conjunctive adverb and a subject and verb comes after the conjunctive adverb. Do that with each one of these words accordingly, also, anyway, beside, besides, consequently, even so, for example, for instance, furthermore, however, in fact, in other words, in the meantime, uh, indeed, likewise, moreover, namely, nevertheless, notwithstanding, on the contrary, on the other hand, otherwise, that is, then, therefore, and, oops, I'm sorry, the words then, thus, and hence are different, which I can erase that. Uh, whenever it's, you have a conjunctive adverb that has only one syllable, then all that's necessary is the semicolon, not the comma. So put a semicolon before this one and a semicolon before this one, not a comma uh, to separate it when it's used to divide two independent clauses. Correct this one right here on the screen really quickly. Um, but if you had the word however, then you'd have subject verb, semicolon, comma, subject and verb. Okay. Um, examples of those. Some companies oppose employee use of social media in the workplace. However, other companies find that it encourages team collaboration and knowledge of sharing. So this conjunctive adverb right here joins two independent clauses. So a semicolon goes before it and a comma goes after it. Uh, and then here's other examples to support that as well. Now on the next page, it shows one syllable conjunctive adverbs such as the word thus or then just use a semicolon before them, but no comma whenever you're using them as conjunctive adverbs to join two independent clauses if it's only one syllable. If the conjunctive adverb, that is, is only one syllable. Okay, now here's a word however. Notice that it does not have a semicolon after, uh, before the word however with a comma after it. 
And the reason is because it's parenthetically inserted. It's not joining two independent clauses. The left is independent, but the right is dependent. So it's just parenthetically inserted. This one right here is a little bit more clear. We're just going to use commas to offset it because we have a noun to the left of it, and the verb comes after it, so it's parenthetically inserted. If that be the case, just use commas to offset it. Okay, the next area is subordinating conjunctions. Here's a list of many of them. I can even add, um, I see another one that's not on there, such as the word had. Had we known, had we known of this, uh, of the accident, we would have taken a different route. So that word had is functioning as a uh, subordinated conjunction in that particular case, and then we use a comma to offset it since it's introductory. So anytime that you have a word that generally um, comes across as the idea that it is um, conjecture, or if it comes across that it is conditional, uh, and a noun and verb follows it, then always in, uh, add a comma after that particular clause because it's dependent. After the bell had rung, comma, class immediately started. So it's just a complex sentence that begins with a dependent clause. It's introductory, so that's why we have a comma to offset the dependent clause from the independent clause. After the bell had rung, comma, class began immediately. Okay, although she seemed confident of the results, Although she seemed confident of the results, it's introductory and there's a noun and verb that follows it, use a comma to offset it. Although she seemed confident of the results, I saw her tear up later. later. So it's a complex sentence with an introductory dependent clause that's always offset with a comma. So anytime you have a conditional word and it has a noun and verb after it, use a comma to offset it if it's introductory. Now, if it is not introductory, if it comes at the end of a sentence, that's called a terminal dependent clause, then, as she mentions right down here on the next page, if you have any questions, comma, please call me, is the way that that would be written. But since it places the dependent clause at the end, remove the comma. Please call me if you have any questions. It's still a complex sentence because it includes a dependent clause and a independent clause. Now, if however the dependent clause at the end of the sentence interrupts the flow of the sentence, provides non-essential information or sounds as, as if it were an afterthought, then you can include a comma. People find photos of junk food appealing, comma, even though they know such food isn't healthy. So it interrupts the flow of the sentence here, so that's why they included the comma at the end of this terminal sentence where it's dependent. Okay, relatively clauses, relative clauses. Who, whom, whom, who, whose, and whom, which, and that. Uh, when they have a noun and verb that follows them, or if they're functioning as a noun and a verb follows them, uh, they're considered to be dependent clauses, and they're usually adjective clauses describing something or someone. Who, whose, and whom refer to people, and they can be essential or non-essential. If they're essential, meaning that they're required, don't use commas. If they're non-essential, meaning that they're not required, use commas. Now the word that don't use commas. I put the word no commas out to the side whenever you have a that clause, and they refer to animals and things. Uh, so no clause is necessary. In fact, they tell you over here essential clause, meaning, meaning it's uh, to, uh, that it's required, so no comma is required uh, for essential clauses. The word which, always put a comma before it when a noun and verb follows because it's not uh, usually a non-essential, and it also refers to animals and things. Okay, this one is required. 
any citizen, and then here's a new clause, who wants to attend the centennial celebration, okay, there's your clause in question. It's a who clause that refers to citizen. Adjectives modify nouns and pronouns and ask the questions, what kind, which one, how much, and how many? Which citizen? The one who wants to attend the centennial celebration. Uh, I don't know which citizen it is, but it tells us in the adjective clause it's a, only the one who wants to attend the centennial celebration. So that makes this one required. This clause is required, which means we don't have commas if it's required. Students whose GPAs are above 3.0 qualify for the scholarship. So whose GPAs are above 3.0? There is the adjective clause that refers to students, and it's required. So we don't use commas. That clause is required, so we're not going to offset it with commas. Which student? The one whose GPA is above 3.0, that student will qualify for the scholarship. And a company that values, here's the adjective clause here, that values his employees. It's a clause that refers to which company? That company. Since uh, the company that values its employees, that particular company itself does not have a comma because it's required as well. Now, on the other side of the fence are those clauses that are not required. They do require commas then. Okay, Marissa Meyer, who is CEO of Yahoo. So here's your clause right here. This one is not required. This clause is not required. It refers to Marissa Meyer. So it's an adjective clause that tells us who Marissa Meyer is. I know Marissa Meyer. Now, personally, I really don't know who Marissa Meyer is. So this is just augmenting it. So, uh, Marissa Meyer, who is CEO of Yahoo, this clause is not required. I could leave it out and say Marissa Meyer is the youngest CEO of a Fortune 500 company. This part just augments it, so it parenthetically inserts this clause. Since it's not required to identify Marissa Meyer, use commas to offset it. Ray Tomlinson, if you get the point right here, you see usually if they include a person's name, then any clause that's used to refer to it is not required, so it must be offset with commas. So Ray Tomlinson, comma, whose career is in computer program, comma, sent the very first message in 1971. This clause is not needed to tell me who Ray Tomlinson is. It just supplements it, so it's parenthetically inserted, if you will, and that's why commas are needed. Okay, to review, if you have a coordinated conjunction and but or nor so for and yet that joins two independent clauses, use a comma before it. If you have a conjunctive adverb that joins two independent clauses, use a semicolon before it and a comma after it unless the conjunctive adverb is one syllable, such as the words thus or hence or then, if that be the case, then all you need is a semicolon if that one syllable conjunctive adverb does still indeed join two independent clauses. This next one has um, an introductory it's an introductory dependent clause that begins with a subordinating conjunction with a conditional word. If it's introductory, then you must have a comma to offset it from the independent clause. Uh, the exception to this rule is if the dependent clause is positioned at the end and uh, does not interrupt the flow of the sentence, then you're not going to use a comma in that particular case. Um, and Oh, I guess that's here the uh, opportunity right here where if 
here's the dependent clause at the end, which is called a, uh, a terminal dependent clause, with the independent clause introducing it, get rid of the comma unless it interrupts the flow or suggests a contrast or something to that effect. Okay, level three, correlatives. Uh, both and, not only but also, either or, neither nor. Those are considered to be correlatives and they should be kept together. So if you have a noun and verb that follows not only, then you need a noun and verb to follow but also. Don't split it up. Keep it parallel. Um, okay, so what they did here with the word uh, and is that they have excellent customer service and a lenient return policy. They kept that consistent. And then right here for the word uh, not only but also, following the word not only but also is excellent customer. Um, and a lenient return policy, so they're adjectives, uh, more emphatic in that particular case. Here's the issue with this one. This one's definitely wrong. I neither have the time nor the energy for this. Uh, so we have neither nor, and there's a verb, and then there's an article. So it's broken up, it's not parallel. So it should say I, neither, I have neither the time Notice time follows neither, nor the energy. Energy follows nor. Those are parallel with each other and it makes it easier for the reader. She was not only talented, but she was also intelligent. So they broke up the word, but also, in this particular case, let's put them back together. She was not only talented, but also intelligent to make it parallel. A review of the sentence structure. Simple sentence is one independent clause that may have multiple subjects and multiple verbs. So you may have to use commas to separate items in a series or something to that effect. Uh, compound sentence is two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction or joined by a transitional or conjunctive adverb. Um, to divide two independent clauses in a compound sentence, uh, use a comma if it's a coordinating conjunction and but or nor for so and yet. Uh, and then use a semicolon and a comma if it's a conjunctive adverb. The words therefore, consequently, nevertheless. Uh, on the other hand, again, if it joins two independent clauses in a compound sentence, use a semicolon before it and a comma after it. Unless it's a one syllable conjunctive adverb, then you can get rid of the comma. Complex sentences has one dependent clause and one independent clause. If it's introductory dependent clause, use a comma to offset it. It starts with a subordinated conjunction like since. Since Lillian Peters founded her own dessert business, comma. It's introductory, so they use a comma to offset the dependent clause from the independent clause. She has specialized in molded containers of French chocolate. And then a compound complex sentence has two independent clauses and a dependent clause. Lilia's chocolate designs were copyrighted, semicolon, therefore, comma, when another chocolatier copied one, comma, she sued and won. Two independent clauses with one dependent clause makes it compound complex. Knowing the structure of those four sentence types will help with the identification of where commas will actually appear. Do the reinforcement exercises that are graded and submit those. Any questions?